All right, so how are you guys doing? Oh, man, we're doing so good. Yeah. Tim, how are you doing? Uh, a little tired. You know, had a long day, but doing well. Okay. So you guys had a really, really great team. It was phenomenal. That Thank was, you. Like, one of the few sets that I caught because I've been, like, over here kind of like, trying to figure out, like, questions and everything. Mm -hmm. But, like, you guys were on, like, firing on, on all cylinders. Everyone was, you know, you guys were, got the crowd really moving. Awesome. Thank you. And, and everything. It's, um, do you guys have any, like, pre-show ritual that you kind of stick to before going on stage? Uh, mostly just stretching, trying not to get trying not to get hurt for the most part. Yep, and then we usually have a one, two, three with the hands in and when someone picks something weird or funny to say and we all scream it on three. That's been our tradition for about 15 years. But that's about it. This is still going. That's still going, okay. Well, it's, 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 that screen turned off. But... Hey, we're good, we're troubleshooting over here. I love it, okay. But, uh, but yeah, that's it, and yeah. Alright, so, serious question. Not yet. Here's the thing. My friend Grant, he plays bass in our band. I was talking to him yesterday, and he said, Hey, I think I'm going to go see Infinity War tonight. I said, Hey, wait for me, because I want to go see it with you. He said, Okay, cool, I'll wait for you. He didn't wait. He went and saw it today. He said it was awesome, and I was like, Oh, okay, well, you'll come see it with me then. He was like, No. <laughs> so he's not going to go see it again, so I'm going to have to go see it by myself or with somebody I don't want to see it with. Yeah, uh, some idiot. Yeah. <laughs> some idiot. Um, of all those movies, favorite so far? Of the Marvel movies. Infinity Wars. Yeah. Ooh. I haven't seen it yet, but I can tell by the box office it's got to be good. Man. Oh, that's hard. I mean, the first Iron Man is, like, so good. Like, really, really good. Um, and the first uh, Captain America is really good. Really good, too. Iron Man is really good. Yeah. Yeah. They really did something to his character. I'm like, I kind of want him gone. Yeah, I ha have you seen Infinity War? No, I haven't. Okay, all right. Go. I'm going to be doing this all weekend, but Monday before I get back. There you go. So I'm going to go. I'm I'll tweet you it. some spoilers. All right. I'm going to see it tomorrow. And it is wild. All right. Wait, Ready for it. Just say you get your wish. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, favorite hero? Marvel hero? Yeah. Cap I'm a Captain America guy. I don't Chris. know if that's super lame. Chris is my hero. Marvel? Yeah. The Punisher, dog. Ooh. Have you caught the show on Netflix? No. It's supposed to be really good, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Heard. I've heard that, that that one's really good. I heard Daredevil's really good, too. Yeah, I haven't seen either. I Jessica Jones. That one was awesome. That first season. Yeah, I need to check out all those. I heard Iron Fist just sucks. Yeah, I didn't hear good things about that yeah, one. Yeah, me neither. Let's see. Um, what about DC? Who? Yeah, no. Uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman films are amazing. Everything else is not amazing. Yeah. But, uh, but comic -wise, like, I don't read. Com I don't read comic books. No. Name me five of the top DC heroes. My top five? Or just? Sure, any, yeah. Any five? Uh, Flash, Batman, obviously, Superman, Wonder Woman. It was Justice League. Yeah, no, I, I'll take back what I said. The Wonder Woman movie was good. It was. Wonder yeah. Woman was good. I believe Batman would have to be the top for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely my favorite hero across the board. Yeah. See, what's yeah, I, funny is I think that uh, the Christopher Nolan Batman films are some of the best films ever, but I would almost say that Christian Bale is my least favorite Batman. Because I'm, I'm a Michael Keaton guy, personally. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. yeah. Christian Bale was pretty, pretty good. Not, not great. I think he really had, he had the Bruce Wayne thing to go. Yeah, he, he was giving it his all. Yeah. All right. So, funny thing. Let's see. When you guys got back together, a CD wasn't really, you know, an idea that you guys had. You guys weren't really thinking about that. No. How did that, how did you guys find it? Uh, we were on our tour. We are on our Rebirth tour. Um... And we just had a five-week setup. We all took time off work. It worked out. And about halfway through, we just realized we wanted to keep playing shows. So we basically played a few more shows that year. And then obviously, word got out that we were playing more shows. And more shows started coming, more offers. And then obviously, labels and things like that. We just started naturally writing, just seeing if we wanted to write together, if we enjoyed it, if we thought we could do something good or worth listening to. And that was kind of a natural evolution until we really kind of got serious and everyone kind of decided to like, you know, let's do Under Oath again, healthily um, and together in collaboration. So 
we kind of made a switch, very seamless, but there was a point where it came from natural to intentional and really started working hard on the record and then went in the, uh, to the studio in DC with Matt Squire and Eric Taft um, last summer, July and August, and uh, there here we are. Uh, well, it paid off. This, like I've listened to it a few times, and it's it's great. I I just keep going back to it, and honestly, I predict that it will be on some year-end lists, like on like magazines. And I things. back that. I I would love that. It will be number one on my year-end list. It's my number one favorite album of the year so far. So far. Of the decade. It's probably the best rock record that's maybe ever been released. Probably. Yeah. Ever. Uh, just yeah yeah like we are uh, I think Erase Me is the Batman to heroes in your heart in everyone's heart that ever listened to music <laughs> I might just have to agree with you on that <laughs> what if there are bands that really like their own stuff a lot yeah yeah some of them are convinced that it's just the best thing ever I like listening to them talk a lot yeah. it's fun um, what would be some of your favorite songs on our record or in general? Uh, today, my favorite song on the new record is a song called Sync With You. I like that song a lot. Um, yeah. It changes. No frame for me. Uh, I, I was really happy to get the rapture. Awesome. Like, those, those first three tracks are like, probably the ones that I'm really taking most, but in general, it's, it's start to finish, it's a good album. Awesome. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, what was it like when you guys um, started, you know, writing, like, like writing again? Was it like, you know, was it like old times, or was it something like completely new? Um, it was, it was not like old times, but not in, not in a bad way, um, because we approached writing this record a lot differently uh, for a number of reasons. But it, you know, we, we kind of lived apart geographically, so we wrote a lot more on our own than we've ever done before. So we would write individually. And then me and him would get together, or Aaron and Spencer would get together, and we would like work on stuff. So uh, not like the old days as far as the process, but it did feel really good when we actually got into the studio and started started working on that. So um, I'll, the, uh, the the bad stuff of the old days was not there, which was which was good. Just you know, I, historically the studio for us has been a really contentious time, and uh, it's been a lot of uh, emotions and arguing but th that was not the case this time so yeah it was awesome so, so the time apart really kind of like helped you guys yes grow and yeah totally yeah stand each other a little bit better and everything 100 yeah. percent. yeah yep awesome so it's it's musically it's pretty it's, it's a little bit different from your previous albums it's more i would say like more of a rock album versus, you know, the other ones which are like metalcore, you know, I was, I was listening to some of them and there's like, I can see some comparisons between bands like Every Time I Die and things like that, it was more of a like a noise rock. Was that, did that just happen? Did you guys, were you guys just jamming and that's just what happened or was it something you wanted to experiment with? No, I, I think uh, overall it just happened, you know, because it, it, it was intentional in the fact that we intentionally went in trying to, we just wanted to write what we were enjoying and not, I, like I would say, we, we weren't trying to write an Under Oath album. Um, so that was one thing that was intentional. We went in intentionally saying, we're not going to not try something because it, it might not sound like Under Oath. Um, and I think that through the experimentation that we had in that, uh, you know that's why the record ended up turning out as diverse as it did and i'm i'm really happy that it did because it's you know it's it's interesting to talk to people and hear what their favorite songs are because it varies you know because a lot of the songs are super different from each other so to hear one person say that they really like this like super rocky song and then this person say they like a really heavy or experimental song but it's all the same DNA and it's all on the same record. Like I, I that's I think that's really cool and it's something that we've never really had before. So yeah. Anything you'd like to add? Um, no. I think you I think you nailed it. Awesome. Yeah, I think the. Well, actually, I do have something to add. Hey, you add. Um, yeah, I just think the process overall was the first time we really kind of just didn't really 
have an intention with anything aside from trying to stay friends and trying to uncompromisingly like try everything. And I think that's probably a, a, an off topic and summary of what Chris just said, but we've never really done that before. And that was like interesting. That was probably the weirdest for probably me or maybe me and Chris because we've always we've always felt like we were all on the same page and then we recently found out that we somehow were always on the page and everyone else was uh, were our slaves <laughs> um, that, that was a joke but, but that other people felt like there was a little bit of uh, um, a pigeonholing um, and so for me I went in intentionally trying to figure out when am I allowed to push back? When am I allowed? When should I just go? Let's go with the flow. That was a new thing for me. That was interesting about the process. So you guys worked with uh, with Matt Squire. Like he's not really like uh, associated with heavier acts. Um, how did you guys like choose him? Was he was he recommended or like how did that collaboration come about? I don't remember how the conversation started. Randy. Was it Randy? Okay, yeah, because his, when his name got brought up, it was interesting because he was involved with a lot of rock slash heavier albums that that we really like. Like, you know, he did Thrice stuff. I really liked the work he did with Receiving into Sirens, um, but he hadn't done anything like that in a long time. Like, he had he kind of, like, had gone in this more pop direction and he was working with a lot of like just massive pop artists and uh, so when we talked to him and we got the, that he understood us and he understood what we what we were in the past and was also open to where we wanted to go like he wasn't saying that you guys should or should not do this or that he was just saying like hey you know you guys know how to write songs uh I'm a good producer. Let's get together and just see what happens. And it's 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 crazy when I think back on it because like we had never even met him face to face before we got into the studio. It was, you know, we'd had phone calls and whatnot, but you know that was, our, in hindsight, a really good decision to go with him because he's just ridiculously talented. So yeah. yeah. Uh, was he very hands on and involved with it? Pretty much um, give you guys like free reign. I think it was a mixture of both. I think, you know, what makes Squire so good, in my opinion, is that he knows when to jump in and he knows when, like, the band's catching a wave and he doesn't need to come in and, like, screw it up. And I think everyone struggles with always wanting to be working on something versus going Aaron and Spear in the corner and they're catching a wave. Me coming in is going to disrupt what's happening, so let them finish their thought and then I'll be able to get my input tomorrow or vice versa if I'm working on something like, yo, leave me alone. I'm trying to get a thought out and then we can talk about your feelings on the thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think Squire's really in tune to that. So he really was hands-on and instrumental throughout the process. He helped us build a few of the songs with some of his skill sets that we didn't have as far as programming and uh, modifying sounds. But then he also knew when to just let go and let us just drive for two hours and go down a rabbit hole and then say, all right, what do we have, you know? Yeah. And I think that's one of the best uh, attributes that he has yeah. going for him. Yeah, and I think there's a, there's a uh, perception, you know, because we did go with him and he was associated with, you know, pop acts and this album ended up being more rocky. There's a perception that like, oh, they went to Matt Squire, so they ended up having a more structured rock album, but it's like, that was going to be, you know, the album, he was instrumental in how the album turned out, but it wasn't like he was ever the producer that's in the studio, like, you guys need to do this, or you need to, no, this song needs to sound this way. It was very, it was 100% a collaborative effort, but he was he was that that outside ear who was, able, you know, if we're all in this thing, like, trying to figure this out, he would be able to come in with, like, one comment and be like, you know, do we even need to do that? And then we'd be like, oh, or does that part even need vocals? Oh, we didn't think of that. Like that sort of stuff is where he, he's super, super talented at just being able to come in and have that like needle to the vein of like, oh yeah, like you totally get what should be going on here. So yeah. Yeah, it's like little things that make big differences. 100%. And, and some, some big things that make big differences too. So yeah. 
Um, this time around, did you guys explore any new themes uh, lyrically? Or? I didn't. Nor I don't. Did I. Would Aaron we, and Speed explored the themes that they were thinking on at that point, but we, we didn't really do much. Oh, they had all the yeah, we don't. We don't. We're not involved in that at all. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you guys had a lot of touring coming up. Are there any places that you're looking for? You have a couple more festivals. All these festivals I'm really looking forward to. These are awesome. Like being able to just see all these really cool bands and be able to hang out with friends. It's yeah, it's cool. But also looking forward to getting into some some rooms with our own production and our own crowd. And yeah, it's yeah, gonna be sick. Um, uh, I think it's we'll probably have to wrap it up. I maybe in a minute. Uh, I don't yeah, know. I think we have another one more. Oh yeah. All right. Well, um, any last um, any albums that you're excited for? No. Um. No. <laughs> Albums I'm excited. That excited for. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm really interested in that new Ghost album, honestly. Like, I know I said it before, but uh, after hearing that song, I'm really stoked to see what that record holds, personally. Um, new albums. A lot of stuff just came out today, but there's a new Andy Mineo EP that came out that I think is really good. Our friends Limbs back home, their record came out yesterday, so we're stoked on that. They're coming on the tour with us. Um, and then hopefully Radiohead or Nine Inch Nails or someone drops something soon. That'd be great. Yeah. And any last uh, words yeah, for your fans? Thanks for the support. Yeah. Seriously. It, yeah. If, uh, yeah. If you guys didn't care, then we wouldn't be able to do what we love to do. So, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Awesome. Thanks, man. Well, dude, good to meet you, man. Yeah, yeah, super nice meeting you. Have a good rest of your night. You too. Awesome. Yeah, it's actually we gotta do a different one, man.